Jason Clark here with Southeastern Reptile Rescue. I am so excited to be sharing with you some of my favorite snakes, the copperhead and the cottonmouth. And a little later, a very special snake. Let's go. Cottonmouth. This is absolutely one of my favorite species of snake. And the more I learn about cottonmouths, the more I realize just how cool these snakes really are. Here are four fun facts about the cottonmouth. Number one, cottonmouths have a white mouth. Yes, the inside of their mouth is white like cotton. Not the copperhead. The inside of their mouth is more of a pretty pink color and they don't really show it off like the cottonmouth does. In the cottonmouth world, it's constantly crawling over mud, dirt, dead leaves, and logs that all make up different tones of mostly brown and black. This snake's dull coloration helps it to seamlessly blend into its environment, even when it's in the water. So with all this camouflage, why is its mouth white? Well, you see, cottonmouths, like most other snakes, believe that other animals that are bigger than them just want to kill them and eat them. So when danger approaches, the cottonmouth quickly flings his mouth open wide. The white colored mouth is then very easy to see against the background of brown mud, leaves, and logs. This flash of white can really get your attention and make you think twice about messing with a cottonmouth. Number two, cottonmouths wear a mask. <laughs> well, it kind of looks like they're wearing a mask across their eyes. Not the copperhead. The mask on the face of a cottonmouth is one of the ways to help identify it. But here in the southeast, our copperheads usually have markings on the side that resemble Hershey Kisses. Just like a raccoon, the cottonmouth looks like it's wearing a mask over its eyes. But why does the cottonmouth have a mask? Well, predators, you know, animals that eat other animals, usually try to grab the head of the animal they want to eat. The easiest way to find an animal's head is to look for its eyes. With the cottonmouth's eyes being hidden, it helps it to not get eaten. Looking for the mask on the cottonmouth can sometimes be helpful in identifying this snake. But it's important to remember not to rely on just one thing to identify any snake. Instead, look at several things, including the snake's pattern. Number three, cottonmouths eat a wide variety of prey, but they're most known for eating fish and frogs. Not the copperhead. Copperheads do eat many different prey items, but not as many as the cottonmouth. Cottonmouths will eat just about anything. This is perfect habitat for a cottonmouth. Habitat is where an animal prefers to live. That gives them all of their food and water and places to hide. Now, if I were to come out here at night, one thing I would hear are lots and lots of frogs. Frogs would be everywhere. If you hear behind me, there's a ton of frogs out here. And this little green tree frog is just one of the many things a cottonmouth can find to eat. <laughs> so, tons of things to eat here. But you know what else is in this water? Alligators. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Would a cottonmouth eat an alligator? Or would an alligator eat a cottonmouth? I guess it all depends. And it all depends on who's bigger. If a big American alligator finds a cottonmouth, he'll definitely eat it. And the thick skin of that alligator helps to prevent him from being bitten by the cottonmouth. But all of those big alligators, none of them start out that way. Every one of them starts out like this. <laughs> this cute little American alligator. This thing is absolutely adorable. And when this gator is a baby like this one is, and a cottonmouth comes along, another name for this would be cottonmouth lunch. So he would definitely eat this little gator. So yes, alligators eat cottonmouths, but cottonmouths can eat alligators. 
number four. Cotton mouse are semi-aquatic. That means they really like living in the water where they can swim and hunt for food. Not the copperhead. Since it is a snake, it's a good swimmer. All snakes are, but copperheads are not usually found in the water. Cotton mouse are right at home in the water and can swim at the surface, or they can dive down deep and swim where they can't be seen by predators. People often wonder if a cotton mouth is underwater, can it still bite? Well, cotton mouths often eat fish. How do they catch a fish? Well, they bite it. And of course, most of the time the fish are found underwater. So yes, a cotton mouth can bite underwater, but cotton mouths don't just live in the water all day every day. Most of the time they're on land, but are usually not found far from the water. Man, I just love cotton mouths. Yes, they can be dangerous, but somebody's got to love them, so I guess that'll just have to be me. But for now, it's time to leave them alone and go find our next snake. The copperhead, one of the most beautiful snakes in the world. But like most venomous snakes, it's very misunderstood, but definitely one of my favorites. Right now, here are four fun facts about the copperhead. Number one, camouflage. Copperheads have amazing camouflage, but it's not just good, it's perfect for where they like to live. Not the cottonmouth. They have really good camouflage too, but it's not meant to blend in with oak leaves and pine straw like the copperhead is. Camouflage helps the copperhead hide from predators and also helps it when hunting for its own food. Can you see this copperhead? I hope so, because stepping in the wrong spot here would not be a good thing. Number two, copperheads have a distinct, vivid pattern that's just as bold and easy to see in adults as it is in the babies. Not cottonmouths. Cottonmouths have a very distinct pattern when they're juveniles, but as they grow, that pattern usually darkens and fades with age, so they don't have that sharp, distinct pattern that copperheads are known for. Wow, now that's a good looking snake. A good way to identify a copperhead that lives here in the southeast is to look for the pattern on its sides that look like Hershey Kisses. But just remember, don't always rely on just one thing to identify a snake. The snake you see might be that special copperhead that's born with no Hershey Kisses. It's rare, but it happens. Number three, copperheads eat many different things including rodents, lizards, and even toads. But one of their favorite foods is cicadas. They love them, not cottonmouth. It's not that a cottonmouth wouldn't eat a cicada, but copperheads just happen to be known for it. All right, this right here is a cicada. We're out here looking for copperheads, but copperheads are out here looking for this big bug. This is a cicada, copperheads love them. This one probably just shed his exoskeleton like this one right here is doing. This is a cicada coming out of his exoskeleton. A beautiful, beautiful green. And uh, copperheads love these. Copperheads love cicadas. This right here is copperhead food. And he's so cool. I mean, I didn't think I'd get to see this coming out here tonight. I came here to look for copperheads. Didn't think I was gonna be able to see cicadas coming out like this. But this is perfect. This whole area right here is just perfect for copperheads. And uh, I can't, oh, oh, right here, copperhead, copperhead. We have a copperhead right here. And he is eating something. I bet you it's a cicada. I bet you he's got a cicada in his mouth right now. So let's go. He's got something in his mouth. And I can't, t I can't tell what it is. Um, but it looks, okay, it looks like a cicada. And let me get the camera down here. Uh, Audrey, hold this flashlight for me, please, so I can hold the camera. Okay, so, oh yeah, he's got a cicada in his mouth. This is a young copperhead. He's only about a foot long. And this is a pretty, okay, no, he's, get, he's gonna spit it up. He's gonna regurgitate the, the, the cicada. Please don't, please don't spit it up. I didn't mean to scare you, buddy. All right, now, you know, if, if he spits this up, only reason he's doing that is because his main defense is to be able to bite me. But it's, okay, here it comes. He spit it up, but he can't do that with a cicada in his mouth. Very cool. Number four, copperheads are not water snakes. If you're seeing copperheads that are living in the water, chances are it's not a copperhead. Not cotton mouse. Cotton mouse are also called water moccasins. They're semi-aquatic, which means they don't live in water full time, 
but they heavily depend on it. Just like cottonmouths are sometimes called water moccasins, copperheads are sometimes called highland moccasins. This is because unlike the cottonmouth, they usually prefer higher ground away from water. This doesn't mean they hate water. Copperheads are actually great swimmers. They just don't live at the water's edge and swim every day like cottonmouths do. People often see different harmless water snakes that have similar colors as copperheads. These non-venomous water snakes are then misidentified and thought to be water-loving copperheads. But me and you, we know better than that. It's easy to understand why the copperhead really likes living in this environment. Plenty of dead leaves and pine straw to hide in, and all kinds of cool, snaky places under these rocks. But there's another place copperheads like to live too. Usually it has everything they need, hiding places and even food are abundant in this area. So pay attention and watch where you put your hands and feet where you live. I'm here with my daughters, Audrey and Lily. We've learned a lot about these two snakes and one thing is for certain, they are definitely not the same. Copperheads and cottonmouths are worlds But apart. wait, you forgot. When copperheads are worn, they have a bright green or yellow tail. Okay, yeah, that, that's that's true. Copperheads do have- Cottonmouth babies have that too. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Cottonmouth babies have that too. This is one thing I guess they have in common. So when these snakes are born, they're babies, both of them do have like a bright green or yellow colored tail. Now we know these snakes have great camouflage. So why the brightly colored tail? Won't that be easy to see? Yes, and that's exactly what it wants. These snakes find a nice comfy spot to hide. Then they put that bright yellow or greenish colored tail right out in front of their face and wiggle it. Then a frog or lizard thinks they found a juicy caterpillar to eat. Well, it's all over at that point. That frog or lizard just became snake food. So we've learned. Oh, it's something really, really important you forgot to mention about cottonmouths is that they don't chase people and everybody thinks they do. Okay, that's absolutely true. Cottonmouths don't chase well, people. Well, copperheads don't either. Uh, that's true. Copperheads don't either. Copperheads nor cottonmouths chase people, contrary to what you've been told. The myth of cottonmouths chasing people has been passed from generation to generation. Of course, neither of these snakes are aggressive and neither will chase you. There have been instances of cottonmouths going towards a person. However, the snake was never chasing them. Usually it's just trying to go past them to find a nice place to hide. Maybe it wants to hide next to your foot because you're casting a good shadow. But these snakes are not aggressive and the last thing they want is to come pick a fight with you. Did you mention that copperheads are venomous? No, I didn't mention that fact. Hello? Cottonmouths are venomous too. <laughs> yes, copperheads and cottonmouths are both venomous. They can be very dangerous. That's why when we encounter these snakes, I don't want you handling them because they can hurt you really bad. The copperhead and cottonmouth are venomous snakes. This means that you should never handle or interact with them in any way because if they were to bite, that would be really, really bad. Fortunately, these are not aggressive snakes, and the only thing they want from us is just to be left alone. Okay, okay, I get it. These are very different snakes, but they do have a couple things in common. Is there anything else you've learned about these I've snakes? I've learned something about cottonmouths. What? That they're in the genus Ipistodon. <laughs> that's a big word, and that's true. Cottonmouths are in the genus. Well, copperheads are also a Kistrigon. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're both right. Copperheads and cottonmouths are both in the genus known as Achistronaut. And this is the scientific classification of animals. This basically means that these two snakes are very closely related to Wait, each other. Wait, so they're like cousins? Uh, I guess that's a good way to look at it. Um, yeah. or do they have any other cousins? <laughs> they sure do. This is the Cantil. It's also in the genus known as Achistrodon. Unlike the copperhead and cottonmouth, the cantil doesn't live here in the United States. Instead, it's from Mexico and Central America. Can you see the similarities between cantils and their cousins, the copperhead and cottonmouth? 
So what if we can mix these two snakes together? What do you mean? The copperhead and the cottonmouth. Mix them? Yeah, what would that look like? Well, since these snakes are very closely related, that's actually possible. You can mix a copperhead with a cottonmouth. And this half copperhead, half cottonmouth snake would be what's known as a hybrid. Okay, I have to see this. So what would this strange little snake be called? Because it's not completely a copperhead and it's not completely a cottonmouth. So what do we call this thing? We could call it a Hershey Kiss fish and cicada eater. That just sounds dumb. How about a copperhead cottonmouth remix? That literally makes no sense at all. <laughs> okay, a, a copper mouth. No! This snake is actually called a cottonhead. A cottonhead is the baby snake you get when the parents are a copperhead and a cottonmouth. Many times hybrid animals are sterile. That means they cannot reproduce. But the cottonhead is definitely an exception since they can reproduce and have babies. This snake's venom is similar to the venom of its parents. So if it were to bite me, we would treat the bite in much the same way as the bite of a copperhead or a cottonmouth and if necessary, we would even use the same anti-venom. This snake was produced in captivity. The possibility of finding a cottonhead in the wild is very, very rare and unlikely to ever happen to most of us. We can look at people the same way we look at these snakes. We all have differences and usually those differences are very easy to see. But if we take time to look a little closer, you'll start to realize just how much more you have in common and different. The cod mouth. This is absolutely I just spit all over my lip. <laughs> The copperhead, one of the most beautiful snakes in the world, but most, uh, my nose is itching like crazy. I was trying to wait. Okay, okay. Yeah. The copperhead, one of the most beautiful snakes in the world, but most, but most. Uh. The copperhead. No, stop. I do. The copperhead. Number two. Copperheads have a very distinct visit. Number two, copperheads have a very distinct visit, visit, vivid. <laughs> Number two, I just think it's gonna look cool because this dirt road is, I mean, literally in the middle of nowhere. Oh, oh no, 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 back up, back up. Oh, that's not go the way I planned it, did.